Russia's cosmic dream. What does that mean for the rest of the world? For that, with us in the Beijing studio, we have uh, Mr. Yang Yuguang, professor at the China Aerospace Science and Industry Cooperation. Welcome, sir, Good to evening. join us. Uh, in Moscow, we're having Dmitry Barbich, who is a political analyst from Sputnik International News Agency. Welcome as well. And meanwhile, joining us from Washington, D.C., we're having Mr. John Loxton, who is the founder and longtime director of the Space Policy Institute at George Washington University. Welcome. So, Mr. Barbich, coming from Russia, help us to understand, is it about lack of money that Russia has to change the fate of your space agency? Well, uh, I think it's understandable that when you have fallen oil prices, quite naturally a lot of uh, state-financed programs are taking cuts. Uh, but I would like to stress that actually this was the whole idea of uh, 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 you know, changing the federal space and agency into a, a, a state-run corporation, Roscosmos. Uh, the difference between uh, uh, corporation and the state agency is that it's much more easier for the corporation to attract uh, what we call non-budget financing. So uh, Roscosmos uh, at the moment has plans to attract investment from, for example, mobile phone companies mm -hmm. which are interested in our low-flying satellites. Uh, there are ideas about, uh, for example, providing the information on the state of forests. You know, from the space you can see uh, where forests have been cut. You can, you can uh, for example, find out how much of uh, the fields were sown. And uh, this is uh, very much appreciated by mm -hmm. the insuring, uh, insurance companies, by the big agri agricultural holdings. I see. So uh, I would not uh, say that this is a death knell for the Russian space program. Uh, we're just going to have many different uh, sources of financing. And there is a silver lining even uh, at this moment. Uh, Russia will have its own civilian space launching uh, 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 airfield, if you want. Uh, this will be called Vostochny, and it, is, it will be located on the territory of Russian Federation. The previous launching pad uh, for the Soviet uh, space uh, aircraft and uh, for the Russian after 1991 it was located in Kazakhstan, as you may know, Baikonur Center. It is still in the Russian property, but we will also have our own one on the Russian territory right. beginning from this year. Mr. Logston, we've been patiently listening to uh, Mr. Barbich helping us to understand what he, is, he sees as the realities. Is the silver lining that he's talking about, or actually the Russia space program is getting ever more flexible with better future? Well, uh, from what I understand, what uh, Mr. Barbage just said, the uh, program is shifting directions away from exploration. Uh, Russia's been planning to return or to send people to the moon in the late 2020s, early 2030s, and involved in space exploration. But all the examples just given are the use of the space program for earthbound applications and purposes. And that's a very different direction for the program. Mm. What do you think, though, uh, Mr. Loxton, about this change? Will that mean much less uh, competition between Russia and the United States? And the U.S. is shouldering more responsibility in research and exploration in that regard? Well, uh, actually, the relationship between the United States and Russia in space over the past uh, 20 years or so, 15 years, has been one of cooperation. Mm. After all, we are the lead partners in the International Space Station. Right. Uh, we are depending, we the U.S. are depending on Russia right now to carry our astronauts to the space station. So there, there's an interdependence between the United States and Russia that I think will continue in, in human space flight. Uh, there is competition in applications because they have economic payoffs and, and competition is what drives uh, the economic applications of space. Mm. Whatever is happening to one of the biggest players, Russia, in terms of uh, space exploration would mean big news for all the other players who are also have a big ambition in that regard. China probably is one of those. Uh, uh, 
Mr. Yang, what does that mean for China? Well, uh, first I should express that uh, it is a great pity when I uh, heard this news. Uh, you see that, uh, as the other guests have said, uh, if the budget shrinked, uh, first the exploration will be shrinked. Uh, well, that's the right field for uh, different countries to cooperate together. And you see that the former Soviet Union and Russia had so many glories before, had ranked so many first, uh, but uh, with the uh, shrink of the budget, there will be no longer these kind of uh, achievements mm. uh, maybe in the future. Mm. Uh, Mr. Barbish, therefore, it seems that Mr. Yang is talking about, well, there will be a lot of application competitions, but when it comes to really basic space exploration, which would lead to all of the achievements in space. That really has been ever shrinking because Russia has withdrawn. Was it a pity? Uh, well, I agree with Professor Young that in the main issues, we are going to have cooperation and we're having it right now. Uh, I'm very glad that uh, John Wongson uh, mentioned the fact that we are expecting back from the International Space Station, we are expecting in March the two, uh, the two astronauts, a Russian one and an American mm. one, uh, Mikhail Kornienko from Russia and Scott Kelly from the United States. Scott Kelly will return breaking the record, the American record, not the Russian one, of uh, a human being staying in, in outer space. Right. He will have stayed 342 days well, at the International Space well, Station. Well, they all sound so Thanks beautiful. Yeah, well, Not only thanks to the United States, but also thanks to Russia. Of course, uh, Mr. Barbage, that sounds beautiful, but that's only because Russia was putting funds into the outer space exploration, for example, at the International Space Station. But what about in the future with this cuts? That's what people are concerned. We could always be reminiscent. But what about the future? Are Russians, technicians, uh, aerospace people concerned about their future? Uh, I'm just uh, coming to that. Uh, uh, as you know, the International Space Station, it's a joint project. Mm -hmm. So every country provides what it can provide. Russia can provide uh, the missiles which carry uh, the uh, satellites and other objects into the outer space. We have Proton missile, which was constructed back in 1960s originally. And we have a new missile, Angara, which unfortunately is a little more expensive than Proton. So what the Russian technicians are doing, and they see a great future in that, is making the space launches cheaper. Uh, Russia has a great potential in that, and this is where uh, the Russian engineers will be working. Mm. The fact that there will be commercial use to some of our space projects does not mean uh, that we are not planning to do, uh, for example, some exploration with the moon. Uh, our Chinese colleague may know that China uh, wants at, at some moment to have a station on the moon. Russia may be helping with that project because okay. uh, it will require joint effort. Right. Joint effort. And uh, uh, I would like to mention that Russia does not curtail its other scientific projects. We have uh, the Phobos 2 project, which, uh, which uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, studies Mars and its uh, satellite. And we have Venus D project. Uh, which st uh, studies one of the planets uh, of the solar system, that, that Venus. Sounds Both of these projects stay afloat okay. and they, they will continue to be implemented. That's, that, that sounds wonderful, but on the other hand, let's just take a look at the number. Over the next 10 years, the Roscosmos, which of course is now the Russian Space Cooperation, uh, is likely to receive 17.5 billion US dollars. That's over the next 10 years, 17.5. And yet, the U.S. Space Agency, NASA, one year alone, 2016, that's 19.3 billion, already more than what Russia would have over the next 10 years. Uh, Mr. Logston, would money mean a lot in space exploration? And also from your perspective, well, sure. who is the biggest supporter of this uh, space exploration? Should that be the government? or should that be so-called the market? Which would play a bigger role and a better role? Well, first of all, let's define a couple of words. Exploration means doing new things, making new discoveries, going new places. Mm. Uh, application or exploitation 
is using existing capabilities or developing new capabilities for short-term payoffs. So exploration, I think, is, is the uh, central focus of the U.S. Uh, government space program, and it's what governments can do better than, than the market can do. Uh, the U.S. goal is eventually in the 2030s sending humans to Mars with a lot of intermediate steps along the way, and mm. we want to do it in cooperation with all of the spacefaring countries. So uh, uh, these, these cutbacks to the Russian future budget are bothersome in the sense that, that they reduce the possibility of Russia being a major player in future exploration. Mm. But Mr. Logston, we understand this very well. Sometimes competition creates momentum to work harder. And that's what happened during the Cold War uh, between Russia and the United States in terms of sending human beings to the moon, for example. Uh, and now when you have one less competitor, one less very strong competitor, will that mean still hard work coming from the U.S.? Will the U.S. government, as a result, still commit to what it used to commit when Russia was also a big player. So that probably is also a big question mark, Mr. Logston. Well, look at history. Yes, the United States and the Soviet Union raced to the moon in the 1960s. The United States won that race with Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and Apollo 11. And then basically we quit. Uh, there was no more racing. There was no more uh, competition uh, in, in, in the same way. Uh, the space budget went down from 4% of the government budget to less than 1%. So uh, I think the past 30 years, 40 years coming up on, have been characterized by cooperation among all the spacefaring countries, recognizing that no one of them can afford to do everything we want to do. Uh, so it's, it's not competition among major companies, uh, countries, pardon me, it is cooperation among major countries, hopefully including China. Mm. Uh, Mr. Yang, we well understand all the industry insiders and also the space uh, uh, people want to have cooperation despite what uh, could be political complications, uh, just reflected by the remark coming from Ms. Loxton from the U.S. But the question is, will there be still a big momentum as we used to have back in the 60s, 70s, in terms of outer space exploration, exploitation, and also the so-called application? Three words mentioned by Mr. Loxton. Uh, honestly speaking, uh, yes, competition is a very important factor for the decision makers. Uh, but today, I should emphasize that the United States invest more in space field is a very wise choice. Uh, you see that the return rate of space programs is very high, mm. although most of the reward are indirect reward. But you see, uh, in the Apollo program, uh, the lowest estimation of the reward is rate is about six or even uh, 10, in more than 10 uh, uh, for some organs uh, analysis results. So uh, for Russia, I don't think it is a wise choice to shrink the uh, space programs. Uh, if it, uh, either for uh, exploitation or exploration or applications, if they can invest more, uh, it will have uh, much more reward uh, than they can imagine uh, at the current stage. Mm. But of course, uh, it is very difficult as we understand their economic situation and therefore it might be a natural uh, decision coming from the Russian side. Having said that though, uh, Mr. Barbic, uh, what do you expect Russia, the future direction of Russia's uh, uh, space program? Uh, will the market necessarily going to play a decisive role and will it be a success for the transformation of the Russian space program? from state-owned now to so-called market-driven? Uh, well, I would like to stress that this is going to be a state corporation, which means that it will have uh, both uh, uh, you know, certain aims right. determined by the state and uh, certain aims and programs de de determined by the market. So it's going to be a combination of the two. And judging by my interviews with the uh, specialists in the field, it is possible to combine exploration and uh, sometimes even commercial use uh, of space. Uh, I remember that Russia was a lot more enthusiastic about space tourism 
uh, than NASA back in the 1990s. NASA thought that this was not serious. Russia thought that this was serious, and there were several very successful projects. So, uh, you know, we are talking about a pretty small money. You know, you just mentioned uh, the American space program will get about 19 billion next year. Mm. Well, the United States uh, spent several trillion dollars on its operation in Iraq alone. So uh, if we get our priorities straight, if we understand that instead of fighting for tiny bits of land on the Earth, we may uh, together uh, uh, explore new horizons in space, I think we can get financing mm. in the United States, in Russia, in China. We just need to get our priorities straight. What does China make of this approach taken by Russia from government supported government body to a state owned corporation? Will that be a smart choice for China as well, at least in a combination of tools? Uh, uh, in these stages, in the in stages before, uh, the uh, most of the space pro programs are led by the state-owned companies uh, and also by the governmental uh, organs. Uh, in the future, maybe uh, more and more private companies will come into this field, and also a combination will. Uh, I mean, uh, that the nation will benefit from this kind of. Are we seeing signs already? Uh, yes, we've already seen that, uh, such as Baidu, the, the, the president of Baidu has uh, expressed his wishes to invest on, uh, on space programs. And also, there are many uh, demands in the domestic market of China, such as the, uh, the demands on um, pictures, I, uh, I mean the, uh, the Earth observation uh, pictures, right. and also uh, some of the applications in uh, navigation, uh, communication, and so on. So this in the future, and also as mentioned, space tourism is also an option. Uh, although uh, the Russia is uh, very enthusiastic in the space tourism, but honestly, I don't think that uh, the Russian market is well commercialized. Mm. Okay, we're going to have other times to talk about the space, yes. the space exploration by the you know just a lay person. But uh, for now, I want to go back to you, Mr. Loxton. The biggest news over the past few months, of course, when it comes to outer space, is the gravitational waves that has been detected. And that is one of the breakthrough of the very basic science research. It's announced by the United States anyway. But the question is, is space exploration, for example, those conducted by NASA, still the direction of future space research, or rather, there are newcomers in the research field. For example, gravitational waves and many others that would likely to become the brightest spots for research. What would that mean for the current NASA and the government-sponsored program of space exploration? Well, first of all, the discovery, uh, detection of these gravitational waves had nothing to do with the space program. Mm. Uh, it was not uh, the instruments were not financed by NASA, but, uh, but by our General Science Foundation, yeah. and the detection was done on the ground and not from space. So it's not really a perfectly good example. But there are good examples. I mean, after all, our space uh, probes, our satellites are detecting one after another thousands of planets around other stars. We're going to launch uh, in 2018 the successor to the Hubble telescope called the James Webb Telescope that's going to look back uh, into the origins of the universe. I mean, the discovery of, of the universe and, and its characteristics mm -hmm. through the use of space techniques will continue, should continue. Uh, it's one of the most exciting adventures uh, 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 that humanity undertakes, and we should do it cooperatively. All right. And then ultimately, when, when humans reach Mars and find out the answer to the question of are we alone at least in these two planets or are there other life forms on the next planet to us? Those are fascinating fundamental questions. Okay, Mr. Yang, final words from you. Uh, while uh, LIGO is the only the start of the exploration of gravitational waves, but space, uh, space technology can do more in this field mm. in the future. Very interesting. We're going to see more development, certainly, in various directions. For now, thank you so much, Dmitry Barbic, Yang Yuguang, and also John Loxton. Really appreciate it, gentlemen. Thank you.